I'd like to go through a little bit about dog park etiquette and basically basically the dog park itself. First thing and probably the well number one and number two. Number one is you should not take a dog to the dog park that's not been vaccinated because bad things can happen and dogs can fight and people can get bitten and I've seen it happen unfortunately and the rule hard and fast is a dog without a rabies shot does not belong in a dog park. So that's number one and probably the most important of all. Number two and it's not a rule, it's just common sense, is if you're bringing a dog to the dog park, truthfully, that dog needs to be good with other animals, good with people, not aggressive. Because fights happen even with very sweet-tempered dogs who for some reason become ball-obsessive or toy-aggressive or protect their, their people there are lots of reasons that fights happen, but an aggressive dog is dangerous to every animal and every person in the park. And most of the dogs that we walk with are wonderful. They're sweet. They're friendly. They're, 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 it's a ball being in the dog park. But every once in a while, someone will walk in with a dog that simply shouldn't be there. And that usually winds up with either a dog or a person being hurt. That shouldn't happen. Everyone who comes to the dog park needs to know his own dog and know what his dog's parameters are and know that his dog is safe around other dogs, safe around strange people, safe around sometimes children who go running through the park. Uh, there are lots of stimuli for a dog to lose it, as the best way I can think of it. And you have to know your own animal. and. If you come once and you're sure your dog is going to be terrific and he or she isn't and there is an incident or multiple incidents and you can tell who the aggressor is and you know it's your dog, then you shouldn't come back. Um, Lord knows that everybody wants his dog to, to have the opportunity to be free and loose it's fenced, it's secure, it's safe. You want your dog to be able to run and have a good time. And it's also healthy for those of us who go because we get to get a nice walk out of it. But on the other hand, there is an issue of fighting dogs. And there is an issue of, a couple of weeks ago, there was a woman who had a dog at the dog park and someone came in with quite an aggressive dog who attacked her dog. And she tried to break up the fight, and she was badly, badly gashed. So it's not just the dogs you're worrying about, although, you know, I, I consider my dogs, and I always said that they're my fur babies, and I care for them as I would my children, and I love them, and I don't want to see them hurt. But it's also people, and sometimes it's a kid who is acting aggressive, out of control. Um, apropos. If you're bringing children to a dog park, be aware of the fact that if they're going to pick up a stick and run toward a dog, they may very well be hurt. And at that point, you can't really fault the dog if the dog is frightened. And, and I've seen it. And most parents are very good about watching their children. But oftentimes, they watch their children, and then they don't watch their dogs. So you've got to be able to do both when you're in the park. And if you're capable of doing that, and if your dog is wonderful, then by all means, you know, we love to have the more people that are in the dog park, the happier the dogs are because they've got a choice of playmates. But it has to be considered. Number three, great big one is please, please, please pick up after your dog. If your dog defecates in the park, clean it up because nobody wants to walk in it. Nobody wants their dog to walk in it. And unfortunately, in many cases, nobody wants their dog to eat it either. So there are bags available at the entrance to every park and they're there for a reason. And when you come in, you'll see a sign that says, please pick up after your dog. And we're all pretty serious about that. And if you pick up some other dog's poop at the same time, bless you, we all try to do it um, because we try to keep it a clean environment, the best that we can in the dog park. So, okay, 
You have a sweet-tempered dog that loves to play with other dogs. You want to go for a walk in the dog park. You're a responsible dog owner. You're going to clean up after your dog and everything is terrific. But there are other things that you need to be aware of in a dog park. This year, especially, fleas and ticks are rampant. I have never seen as many ticks as I'm seeing this year. Ticks not only can attach to a dog and suck blood, but they can also transmit disease. That's Lyme disease. And <sighs> Lyme disease is a disease that both people and dogs can get. So you want to have some sort of a flea and tick preventative on your dog. Generally, I don't think a flea collar is adequate because, number one, you're putting a toxin directly under the dog's nose, but number two, it doesn't always cover the whole dog. But I guess it's better than nothing. Um, but there are lots of products on the market that you can put on your dog that will keep the dog safe from fleas and ticks and even sometimes repel mosquitoes, which is equally nice. In any case, whether you choose to do that or not, which is definitely your option, you want to check your dog when you get out of the dog park. Run your hands over the dog. Take a good look at the dog if the dog doesn't have an extremely long coat and see if you don't see any ticks. And if you do, you want to get them off your dog. And then you want to take a look at yourself because I've seen people walking out of the dog park with ticks on their arms or on their stomach or in their hair. And so you walk in the dog park, you walk responsibly. Uh, when you get out of the dog park, you want to check yourself over. If you've got children with, you want to check them as well. Because Lyme disease is a disease that people get as well as dogs. And there is a vaccination you can get from your vet to prevent Lyme disease. Some people swear by it, some people don't want to get it. That is a personal decision on your part. But do check make sure that your dog does not have ticks on him. And there are specific ways to remove ticks that are safest, but that's something you have to talk about with a veterinarian, which I am not. Uh, just be aware of the fact that it is a possibility. There are other possibilities in a dog park. One of the ones that you'll see on most of the signs entering dog parks is something called blastomycosis, I believe which is a fungus which is found in wet ground alongside of ponds, puddles, where wildlife are. And the dog inhales the spores. Now that one has very specific um, symptoms. And again, I don't know exactly what they are. But if you take your dog to the dog park routinely and your dog starts acting sick, you want to then pick up the phone and say to your vet, hey, Another one is leptospirosis, which is transmitted by water. And these dogs go into the park and they drink the muddy water and they go to the ponds and they drink the water in the ponds. And if they do that, or they run in the muddy water and then they lick their paws, this is a bacterial disease. Again, something that you find in dog parks and something interestingly enough, which is zoonotic, which means that it transmits to humans as well. Um, Lord, there are a couple more and I can't think offhand of what they are, but they're there. Having said that, in the 10 years or 12 years that I've been going to the dog park seven days a week, none of my dogs has ever gotten anything serious. Um, they picked up a little eye infection from running in the water and getting splashed in the eye with dirty water. They've, they've gotten a little bit of stomach upset from drinking stuff they should never have drunk or eating stuff that I don't want them eating but they've never gotten any of these illnesses. However, the vets will tell you that these illnesses are around. And one of the things they will strongly recommend if you go to a dog park is that you be sure that your dog has a shot to prevent leptospirosis because it is potentially fatal and it's just out there. And then again, there's another one that I hear an awful lot about people and their dogs coming down with. Uh, heartworm. The mosquitoes are out. They are swarming right now. The shelters are getting in dogs that are heartworm positive. Generally, those are dogs that are kept outside um, and being bitten up by mosquitoes. And that's generally. That's not always. Heartworm medication is an absolute preventative. 
there are folks who don't use it and if you have a dog that's in the house all the time and rarely goes out except to urinate and defecate come back in who cares but if you don't if you've got a dog that's spending a lot of time outside then that's another one that you've got to use a preventative for very frankly uh, and that's that's an easy chewable pill it's and I've got to add one thing here because I'm going to jump in and say it is that many of these medications which are prepared for dogs are fatal to cats. So if you think you're going to find a heartworm preventative that's good for dogs under 20 pounds and you can give it to your cat because your cat is 18 pounds, it's fatal. You, you can't do it. So there's a time to work with your veterinarian and be sure. I've gone through a whole bunch of do's and don'ts. I uh, don't want to diminish the fact that the dog park is a wonderful place for you to have social contact with people who love animals, for your dogs to have social contact and interact, for them to run, for them to play, for them to be free, for them to be real dogs out in the fields in a safe environment. I mean, I love the dog park. My dog loves the dog park. That's all I have to say to her is, do you want to go play? And she'll be all over me barking hysterically because it's time to go. But if you do the dog park, do it sensibly. Know that there are rules. Know that it's not just a place that anyone can come and dump their dog. Um, when more small, when neutered dogs do better in a dog park than on neutered dogs. And if you have a female in heat, please do not ever bring her to the dog park because you will cause dog fights. Enough said about dog parks. I want to throw one more small piece of information in really quickly. Um, I am getting responses to the YouTube um, application of this show, and people are sending in questions about specific animals. I cannot answer these questions. I really can't. I don't know what's still at the shelter. I don't know what's available. Um, and I don't have the computer access to do that. So if you see a dog or a cat at Save a Pet that you absolutely want to know about, you fell in love with, and I have some pretty nifty critters out there, 847-940-7788 will get you someone at the shelter who can tell you far more than I could ever say. And you can get all of the information that you need. We are now going to take you to Save a Pet and show you some of the dogs and cats that are waiting there for adoption.